بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله. Today we are going to continue on our chapter four on the nature of guilt. This is the last part on the nature of guilt that we are going to talk about from our chapter four of this book, Positive Islamic Psychology: A Transcendent Model to Achieve Peace, Happiness, and Success in the 21st Century. All right. So I'm going to read a few paragraphs and then we'll explain. So we have in the last three videos explained to you the whole spectrum of the nature of guilt, how it affects our social standing, how it affects society, and how it affects uh, the well-being, especially children, uh, when you, are, when you uh, condition them towards feeling guilty, then you lead to anxiety, depression, and a lot of the whole range of psychological problems in terms of learning and behavior. So here we talk about uh, religious conditioning. Eh? While it is possible, I think it is more likely leaders within social groupings have attempted to gain control over their followers by creating feelings which might be now considered as religious guilt. So this is where uh, religious organizations create this feeling of religious guilt so that the followers will be always following the leaders. The basic method could have been to have people believe that God created us as, created us as sinners. So this basic method... Uh, to have people to believe that we are created in this world as sinners, bad, evil people that we need to have to be have uh, some sort of redemption. Eh? So this is not within the context of Islamic uh, theology, but this is, uh, is uh, within uh, the Christianity. This is one of their basis of how they can uh, harness the followers to, to do something. We are, not, we are not condemning our Christian brothers, but this is... Uh, a method that is being used. Huh? So, the guilty of being a sinner is used by the religious authority to will control over their followers by establishing religious rules and ritual to confess your sin in order to lessen your guilt. In this way, the followers are trapped in a perpetual cycle of feeling guilty, confession, and more guilt. The followers are shamed before God. So, in Islam, we are not having this idea. So, whichever religion is using this, from the perspective of psychology, it's not a healthy psychology. All right. So, as I say, I do not want to condemn our Christian brothers and sisters, but this is where, for example, in Catholicism, if you do some sin, you have to see your priest, and then they confess your sin, and then they say you're forgiven on behalf of Christ, and so on. So then, perpetually, you'll be going through the whole series of confession after confession after confession. Eh? It is not the way of God to think badly of any person. So God does not think any person as bad because in Islam we are created good. Huh? In the hands of Allah is good. Allah has created everything is in his hands and everything he has created and he has created good. We have been created with the nature of fitrah which is the fit, uh, nature of goodness. Allah is the absolute goodness and he manifested goodness into us. So our nature is goodness not sinners or badness or evilness. Evilness is a manifestation of distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The further away from we are from God, then we are, go, we are the further away in our belief, example in atheistic materialism, then we are indulging in sins and evil. But we are not guilty in the primordial nature of ourselves. We are good human beings created by Allah for a good life and ending this world in a good way returning to Allah with His grace, mercy, blessing, and love. So Allah is not thinking us in any way that make us feel bad. Eh? Any person who consider themselves shame before God is mistaken. So Allah doesn't want us to be shame before Him. Yes, we are doing a lot of sins, but when we seek Allah forgiveness with all sincerity, in, the, in Islam we have this Tawbat Nasuha, it is all forgiven. Even we have the sin as high as a mountain. We are forgiven. If we have sins as high as the heavens, we are forgiven. So basically, this whole idea of imposing guilt as a religious uh, control mechanism is something that uh, is not Islamic and uh, is, is, is psychologically not good. Any person who considers themselves shame before God is mistaken. We can feel shame in ourselves and others may feel maybe may feel ashamed of us, but God is never ashamed of us. So remember, Allahur Rahmanir Rahim, uh, is always 
Ghafurul Wadud. He is always forgiving and forgiving and he's always loving and loving. There is no limit to his, his absolute forgiveness, his absolute, absolute love. So, Allah, in the sight of Allah, we are all good human beings and we strive to be good, uh, to be his sincere servant as a Khalifa, as I mentioned all the time. We strive to make ourselves good, help others to be good and make the world good. So, Allah is never ashamed of us. Allah understands us in the most full and complete way possible. So Allah understands our inner dilemma, our psychological problems, our worry, our fear, our anxiety, our depression, our, our sense of failure, our evil that we have committed, so many evils that we have committed in our life. He knows, but at every point we seek for forgiveness, we would then be able to overcome it. God and Allah understands us in the most full and complete way possible. Beside, many of the laws and rules attributed to the gods in the early history of human society did not come from God. But they were an expression of the beliefs and desires of those who held position of leadership. So the whole idea of uh, we are bad and evil, we need to confess and confess and confess. These are ways of mechanism to control the followers to follow a certain uh, way or a certain religious path which is... Uh, Especially uh, in, 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 the, in Christianity, this is the way of uh, controlling. Eh? The word is anthropomorphize, eh? anthropomorphize, which means to ascribe human form or human character to being or things not human. Human characteristic has been attributed to almost everything at one time or another. Such words, words, such widely diverse things as mountain, trees, weather, stars, the moon, the seas, rivers, sheep, plains, cars, all can be seen as having human attributes. God has also been con uh, considered to have both human form and human characteristic. So from the Islamic perspective, he has placed limit upon God's true nature. It has even been made difficult to know the true nature of God. Aspects of God can be expressed in all things, but all aspects of God are less than the unity of God. Both our belief in God and our understanding of God's nature are conditioned. It does not bother me in the slightest that those believe and as sacred as of human being are conditioned. Conditioning is the natural way in which we come to know the reality of our existence. My experience of God is no less real, sacred or beautiful because it is conditioned. When we understand the true nature of human self, we could understand the true nature of God. And we have elaborated this in the book, chapter 1, uh, principle number 1 and 2 of the nature of the creator and the nature of human self. Eh? So here we are talking about guilty from the religious perspective so we must be able to differentiate eh, between the Islamic perspective and the non-Islamic perspective so in Islam there is no shame in the sight of Allah there is always forgiveness there is always love there is always mercy there is always a way out even to the last breath uh, if we have done evil all our life until our last breath we say the shahada we can be saved by the grace of Allah and naturally, it is not that easy yeah? because if you are doing all the evils, the murder, the killing, the addiction, the, the dunya aspect of to the extreme, how can at your last breath you share the shahada? It will be very difficult. But if the grace of Allah, because everything is by His grace, nothing, even Rasulullah says, it is out of the grace of Allah that I am safe. So in Islam, yes, we do effort, we work, uh, we remove our sins by... Uh, Submitting and surrendering to Allah by doing the Tawbatan Nasuha. We seek forgiveness. Huh? For example, we, we, we talk and we pray and we say for Allah huh? in our dua, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina zalimin, I have run my own soul, or La ilaha illallah uh, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu mulk wa lahu alhamdu yuhi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. And we ask for Allah forgiveness. Uh, after that, we, we glorify Allah and ask for forgiveness. And from there, uh, we ask for His Ghafur, His uh, Wadud, His love. And then from there, we develop a sense of well being uh, in which uh, we, we say our Shahada and say our seeking of forgiveness. And it all slowly but surely removed from our heart. You know, the black spot that if we do sins, so this black spot will disappear. And as that black spot disappears, our whole psyche become very clear in terms of our obediah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of understanding the glory, the mercy and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the peace and tranquility that he put into our hearts and the joy of iman, islam and ihsan. Inshallah, if we can do all that, 
we will achieve the best and fulfill the best in our life.